Item number, SCP-023. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures SCP-023 is to be contained in a walled-off intersection of two corridors at site with at least three meters of space in each direction, and false doors at three of the four ends, in addition to the real door. Security cameras will be placed and maintained above all four doors. At all times, SCP-023's eye sockets are to be filled with spherical inserts made of hard rubber. Eye inserts must be replaced as they degrade. Degradation can be monitored by measuring the brightness of the burning effect, as observed by security footage. Brightness greater than 12 candela requires that the inserts be replaced within 12 hours. Eye inserts are only to be replaced individually, and only after the sun is completely set. Personnel are not to look directly into eye sockets of SCP-023 at any time. Following Incident 023-27, all reflective surfaces, including displays, monitors, and eyewear of any sort, are not permitted within 30 meters of SCP-023's cell. This includes monitors linked to security cameras within its enclosure. Security personnel posted at checkpoints outside both corridors will enforce and adhere to this measure. Experimentation involving SCP-023 has been suspended indefinitely. Description SCP-023 is a large, sexless, shaggy canine, 1.5 meters at the shoulder, with black fur. The following text has been struck through. It has bright orange-red eyes and prominent teeth, and of strike through. Anytime an individual makes eye contact with SCP-023, either that person or a member of their immediate family will die exactly one year after eye contact is broken. Research into the method of selection is incomplete due to a moratorium on experiments, but the available data suggests that having a larger immediate family lessens the chance of the individual making eye contact themselves dying, and neither a pattern nor a preference in victim types have been found. This may indicate that SCP-023's victim is designated entirely at random, but it is unknown whether this selection occurs at the beginning or at the end of the one-year time period. Attempts to terminate an individual who has made eye contact with SCP-023 and their entire immediate family before the one-year time period has ended. Data expunged. Autopsies of individuals killed by SCP-023's effect show that, while outwardly appearing unharmed, their remains have been filled in with highly compacted ash, including but not limited to all organ systems and the circulatory system. Muscle tissue, bones, and brain tissue universally show signs of exposure to temperatures above degrees Celsius. If not contained in a setting that at least superficially resembles a crossroads, SCP-023 will phase through walls to get to the nearest suitable location, incinerating all materials it passes through. SCP-023 was first brought to the Foundation's attention when it attacked a church in while it was in session, killing civilians directly and as a result of eye contact. Following retrieval of SCP-023, Class B amnestics were administered to all witnesses and surviving victims. The incident was covered up as a case of arson. Incident Report 023-026 SCP involved SCP-023 Personnel involved Dr. 5D class personnel Date Location Site Description in an attempt to curtail the danger posed by SCP-023, Dr. has approved the removal of both 023's eyes and teeth. Immediately after both its eyes were removed, SCP-023 breached security by vanishing completely. SCP-023 was reobtained on a stretch of interstate at 4.37 p.m. and brought back into containment, where D-Class personnel finished pulling out its teeth. While the total number of civilians exposed to SCP-023 during this period is unknown, death record monitoring has tied nine civilian deaths to this incident. Time stands confirmed over the course of the next 48 hours that SCP-023 vanished only while the sun was visible in the sky from outside site. Addendum 023-026-1 As of Dr. has been suspended pending disciplinary review for contributing to, if not being directly responsible for, Incident 023-026. Dr. 
is now in charge of SCP-023. The increased difficulties in containment that have been incurred as a result of Dr. should serve to remind all personnel of the Foundation's purpose. Secure, contain, and protect. Research, experimentation, convenience, and even the safety of Foundation personnel are secondary concerns. We are not working to protect ourselves. 05 Addendum 023-026-2 A total of bodies, with a time of death exactly one year after Incident 023-26, have been identified as consistent with SCP-023 exposure. Incident Report 023-27 SCP Involved SCP-023 Personnel Involved Dr. Data Expunged Date Location Site Description Timeline of Events 10 seconds. A pair of glass eyeballs are inserted into the eye sockets of SCP-023 by 2 D-Class personnel. 15 seconds. Glass eyes take on an orange-red glow, similar to what SCP-023's real eyes looked like before removal. 3 minutes and 13 seconds. Molten glass begins to run out of SCP-023's eye sockets. 5 minutes and 54 seconds. Data expunged appear on all lenses, windows, mirrors, monitors, and glass surfaces at site 6 minutes and 12 seconds. Evacuation of site ordered. 6 hours, 54 minutes and 7 seconds. Sun visible over horizon. D-class personnel sent in to check area around SCP-023's enclosure. Data expunged gone. Only trace of SCP-023 is a burnt section of floor around a puddle of colored glass. Personal log of Dr. Date It's my fault. I have doomed my research team, and possibly the rest of the facility. All that's left is to keep trying. We must contain SCP-023. Note, on One year after Incident 023-27, personnel were interred in an unmarked mass grave outside site addendum 023-001 scp-023 broke containment on by passing through its cell wall incident 023-01 scp-023 was later discovered at the intersection of two corridors elsewhere on site agent noted scp-023's similarity to a Special Containment Procedure for SCP-023 Updated Assistant Researcher Issued a reprimand for negligence Addendum 023-002 SCP-023 has been responsible for the deaths of personnel and civilians since it was first brought into containment on 10-12-94 Addendum 023-003 Request for reclassification to Keter pending. Addendum 023-004 Due to both anomalies focusing on specific geographic spaces, their destructive capabilities, and canine appearance, it is possible that SCP-1111-1 may be a variant of the same phenomenon observed in SCP-023, or vice versa. Investigation into the origin of both anomalies is ongoing. Due to the inability to capture SCP-1111-1 for study, investigations are currently focused on SCP-023. Item Number SCP-367 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-367's containment area is to be checked daily for damage done by SCP-367. Any and all damage to containment area is to be repaired immediately. Should damage exceed that which can be repaired in a 12-hour period, SCP-367 is to be moved to a temporary containment area and kept under constant observation while repairs are made. Any attempts by SCP-367 to damage or escape containment are to immediately be met with Chemical Suppression Tactic A-11. Every two hours, SCP-367 is to be provided with one kilogram of feed, which may be composed of any available biomatter. 
In the event that no suitable biomass is available, other items may be provided for consumption, and CSTA-11 is to be placed on standby in case of rejection behavior by SCP-367. SCP-367 is to be weighed after each feeding period to monitor weight and density increase leading up to division. Additional instances of SCP-367 forming in containment are to be disposed of. No unprotected interaction with SCP-367 is to be undertaken, unless it is within 30 minutes of a feeding period. SCP-367 may not be removed from the containment area without approval by Site Command. No instances of SCP-367 are to be released to staff for any purpose other than testing. Description SCP-367 appears to be a small dog of variable breed, most often appearing as a small brown puppy. SCP-367 exhibits a slightly elevated appetite and activity level for a dog of its apparent age and size, and does not sleep, but otherwise behaves as expected for a dog. SCP-367 is a massive single-celled organism, composed of what appears to be a mass of yellow slime, with several white threads suspended in it, with a semi-solid sphere of grey material in the center, deemed the nucleus. It is unknown what SCP-367 is made of, or why its outer shell appears to be a juvenile dog. However, testing data expunged. Further investigation. The strings appear to function as the muscular skeletal system, and under most circumstances, the movement and general behavior of SCP-367 are indistinguishable from a normal dog. SCP-367 is capable of feeding on any solid matter, and has shown the ability to dissolve and digest concrete, steel, titanium, carbon fiber, bone, wood, data expunged. When presented with an item that cannot fit into the external shell's mouth, or be broken down with the teeth, SCP-367 will project pseudopodia from its internal mass and break down the matter into a consumable form. It is unknown how this occurs, as no acid is used, but it appears to be a disruption of the basic atomic bonds of the matter which is still under investigation. SCP-367 does not increase in size when consuming items but does increase in density. In addition, SCP-367 does not produce any waste. After consuming enough material to double its starting mass, SCP-367 will find an isolated location, such as in a cabinet or under furniture, and liquefy its outer shell. It will then divide into two equal masses and reform its outer shell, creating two instances of SCP-367. If SCP-367 is left without food for more than three hours, the internal strings will project from the eyes and mouth areas of SCP-367 and attempt to bore into and break down all nearby matter. In this state, SCP-367 is highly aggressive and has been observed to data expunged. Notes on Recovery SCP-367 was recovered from the residential home of Miss Myra Bancroft in Ireland. Mrs. Bancroft was reported missing several days before, and Foundation staff established containment of her residence when it was reported that she had over 80 small dogs in her home, which had consumed her corpse and most of the home. A single instance of SCP-367 was recovered, with all other instances eliminated via CSTA-11. Ongoing monitoring is in effect to isolate any remaining SCP-367 outside of containment. Item Number SCP-530 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures No special precautions have yet proven necessary. Carl is very calm and friendly and at this stage is free to move about the lower levels of the facility. Carl is free also to interact with SCP-529, as the two have proven non-hostile toward each other as well. Staff are not permitted to feed SCP-530 anything other than his approved food twice daily, or his approved treats during training. Description: SCP-530 appears to be a small dog, in a constant state of physical alteration, Height typically varies between 20 centimeters and 30.5 centimeters at the shoulders. 
Width across the back typically varies between 7.5 cm and 18 cm. Length typically varies between 25.5 cm and 45.5 cm. Larger and smaller sizes have been recorded but are rare and do not last long. The coat of SCP-530 is also in a state of constant change. To date, 467 different hues have been recorded, as well as an unidentified number of patterns. The most extreme flux comes from the growth or absorption of additional limbs, noses, mouths, eyes, ears, and other body parts. While these typically do not last longer than 24 hours, a third eye located slightly left of center on the top of SCP-530's head has remained since approximately one half hour after its discovery. Addendum 530-203A Agent M fed Carl a slice of deli ham of standard proportions, in clear violation of dietary regimen. The resultant odor has been described variously as horrid and plant withering. Agent M has been reprimanded. Item number SCP-652 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-652 is to be kept in standard domestic animal facilities. The room requires basic furnishings for SCP-652 and its handler. Bedding, food, water, and so on. SCP-652 and its handler are permitted to roam the facility grounds at will. Personnel who come in contact with SCP-652 are not permitted to wear heavy boots. SCP-652 is badly frightened by such boots and by anyone wearing them. For the same reason, personnel who come in contact with SCP-652 are not permitted to grow beards. SCP-652's vocalizations are to be recorded and preserved for analysis. Special note is to be taken of any mentions of the phrases ash cloud, hurricane, and or radiation. Description SCP-652 presents as a neutered male dog of the Basset Hound breed. Bone growth analysis indicates that subject is approximately three years old. Subject appears to be physically normal beyond four significant abnormalities. Subject has a tattoo on its belly in the shape of the Marshall, Carter, and Dark logo. The tattoo was likely applied in the dog's infancy. X-rays of the subject reveal several poorly healed skull fractures and broken ribs, suggesting extreme physical abuse. Subject's jaw muscles are well developed, above that of a normal dog of this breed. However, Bite force is in line with what is to be expected of a dog this size. This abnormality is likely to be a direct result of abnormality 4, below. Subject's larynx is grossly distorted. X-ray examination shows significant diversion from expected size and shape. It is unclear whether this is the result of genetic engineering or of surgery. This distortion is believed to be linked to its behavioral anomaly. SCP-652's behavioral anomaly is its ability to produce human speech instead of barking or other standard canine vocalizations. Subject constantly gibbers phrases in at least 34 human languages. Although five of the languages have not been identified yet, analysis of the other 29 languages indicates that SCP-652 is constantly making meteorological predictions for various locations worldwide. These predictions have been found to be 100% accurate for those locations which have been able to be identified. The predictions have no obvious connection with any external stimuli. While it can be assumed that SCP-652 is aware of its own behavior, it does not appear to be under the subject's control. Quality and clarity of vocalization is dependent on SCP-652's physical condition. Speech is muted and mumbled while the subject is sleeping, garbled while the subject is eating or drinking, and agitated and staccato when the subject is excited or afraid. Subject's voice is low in pitch and has a rather limited vocal range. Staff consistently refer to it as unsettling. 
While SCP-652's unusual larynx is the most obvious link to the subject's constant vocal activity, a basic knowledge of speech production tells us that simply changing an animal's larynx will not necessarily allow it to make sounds similar to human speech. Indeed, comparative biology reveals that human and canid larynx structures are actually quite similar. SCP-652's larynx, on the other hand, appears to have no correlation to either. History SCP-652 was recovered during a raid on a Marshall Carter and Dark office in it was found in a shipping crate bearing the indications of having been recently delivered by the National Postal Service with an invalid return address. At the time of the raid, a Marshall Carter and Dark operative was in the process of composing a letter regarding SCP-652. The operative died while resisting capture, and the letter was retrieved from her typewriter. Document 652G List of identified languages spoken by SCP-652 Albanian, Armenian, Basque, Bulgarian, Danish, Dutch, English, Estonian, Finnish, French, German, Greek, Hausa, Hungarian, Icelandic, Italian, Japanese, Canada, Khmer, Lithuanian, Malagasy, Polish, Russian, Romanian, Spanish, Swahili, Tagalog, Urdu, Vietnamese. Document 652N41 Incomplete letter from Marshall Carter and Dark Operative to regarding SCP-652. Dear Colonel, I regret that you were unsatisfied with your purchase. However, it is scarcely our fault that you misinterpreted the catalog description of the item. That said, I must remind you once again that all sales are final. We provide our clients with unique and unparalleled experiences. We do not provide refunds, regardless of whether or not you return your purchase. One would hope that you would have learned this by now. Because we value your business, and because we regret the unfortunate incident subsequent to your last year's purchase of Data Expunged, I have been authorized to repurchase the item from you. We will pay you in cash, or offer you twice that amount as credit on your next purchase. Although this is less than 10% of your original purchase price, the end of document. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.